Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar, the title of which is How Automating Your Email Marketing Can Feed Your Salesforce with Piping Hot Leads. We're using Google Hangouts for this webinar, so you'll see a YouTube-like bar at the bottom of the screen. The presentation will be buffering, so uh, what that means is that if you want to revisit anything, you can simply go back. Also, we'll send you a link of the recording uh, to a recording of the webinar afterwards so you can watch it again if you want to. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a chat box that looks something like that. Um, that allows you to send messages to me and also to ask questions as we go along. Uh, I'll answer them as we go if I can, otherwise um, there'll be time at the end for a Q&A, so we'll make sure that we get all your questions answered. You can also give me your feedback in the chat box. I'm really interested to know how you've been using email up until now, uh, what, what your issues are, um, and so please feel free to send me messages at any time and in this way you can help me to uh, shape this webinar and other webinars uh, to make sure that they're meeting your needs. My name is Murray Cowell and I manage a company called Inbox Income. Uh, with a name like that you can probably guess what we do. We help people to produce income via the inbox. More specifically, we work with business owners and marketing professionals who are not getting the results that they want uh, from their email marketing and show them how to get the right message out to the right people at the right time uh, and in doing so to turn their ideal prospects into loyal customers. If you're on this webinar it's because you want better results. Like most business professionals you probably know that email marketing is great um, but the results that you get are not as good as you know that they could be. Um, here are some of the typical problems that people encounter when they're doing email marketing. Uh, you know that you should be doing email marketing, but you're not quite sure what's the best way to go about it. So you send out uh, emails regularly, maybe a monthly newsletter or something, um, but you haven't got any news, so you often find yourself stuck for something to write about. Even if you can think of something to write about, you don't know how to quite how to write it so that people want to read it. And as a result, the number of people who open your emails is very low, and of those who do open them, the number who do anything as a result is even lower. You don't see any tangible results from your emails, but everywhere you hear people saying that email is a really important tool. So uh, you, you carry on, um, you take it on, on faith that it must be worth doing. Most pe uh, maybe, maybe people will come, come to you by other means after reading your emails. Um, but it, it, so, so even if it's measurable, it's still worth doing. But uh, each month, when the time to do your monthly email approaches, you feel a certain sense of dread that you've got to do it. Then it takes a lot of time, effort, and energy to create the emails, which you don't really want to do. On top of that, all that, you've got some useful and interesting data about your customers, maybe in your e-commerce database, on your website, perhaps in a help desk database, in a membership system or a CRM system, as well as in your email system. And you know that if you could use this data well, you could get better results because you could target people more specifically with content and offers that are hyper-relevant to them. However, to do that, you and your sales team spend hours downloading data, manipulating spreadsheets, and transferring information from one system to another. So you and your highly paid staff are wasting too much time doing jobs that are really no le low level admin tasks. Nobody's really got the time to do that. So the result is that your campaigns are not hyper relevant, uh, which accounts in part for the low open and result response rates. And your sales teams therefore spend too much time chasing lukewarm leads. This is a common scenario, so if you've experienced one or more of these symptoms, then you're in good company, um, because most people who use email marketing uh, have experienced one or more of these problems, myself included, at some point in time. But you're right about one thing for, sh for sure, it's definitely worth doing email marketing, even if you do it badly. One client of ours did nothing more than send out their print newsletter. Uh, they rendered it as a graphic email, it was absolutely awful, there were far too many subjects in it over 1,200 words long, tiny writing, no call to action, but on the back of one of those emails, they landed a £30,000 national contract with a national retailer. So it's great that you do some email marketing, even if you worry that it isn't good enough. At the very least, it keeps your business at the forefront of your prospects and customers' minds, and that's really important because if you're not emailing them, it's only a matter of time before one of your competitors does. Then if they're getting emails from your competitors but not from you, guess what's going to happen? when they need the product or service that you provide, it's highly likely that they will go to the competitor instead because the competitor has been building a relationship with them while they've heard nothing from you. So it's vitally important that you continue to send marketing emails. But the fact that you're here means that you want to get better results. 
And that means getting more people opening your emails, more people clicking on the links in your emails to your website, and more new and repeat customers from your campaigns. On other webinars, we'll deal with the question of what's right and how to write in such a way that your readers cannot help but carry on to the end of the email. How to write in such a way that more, that more people are minded to take action on your emails so that your campaigns become a predictable, reliable source of new and repeat business. There's a full schedule of events on our website at www.inboxincome.co.uk forward slash events. But today's webinar is about automation. One of the most appealing aspects of email uh, as a marketing tool is that it's very cheap. Um, and another, um, relative, to other mar mar relative to other marketing methods, that is, it's, it's very low cost. And another great feature is that it can be automated. Now, in the past, um, building automated campaigns has been the preserve of large organizations and brands because it's needed a lot of time and effort and a big investment in systems and software. However, that's changing fast. And these days, most decent email marketing platforms have some form of automation built into them. In fact, you're probably already using some kind of automation as we shall shortly see. So it's becoming possible to build automated campaigns that bring in business at a very low cost with very little or no human effort or input. So what we're going to cover today Firstly is, why should you bother with automation? What are the benefits of uh, automating your campaigns? And why is automation something that you shouldn't ignore? Next, we're going to take a look at different types of automation and explore where each different approach would be appropriate. After that, we'll take you through the steps that you need to follow to get started with automation. And finally, we'll show you where you can get further guidance if you want to take your campaigns to the next level. As I promised you, there'll be no sales pitch on this webinar. There's nothing here for sale. But I will take a few moments to explain how we work with clients to help them become more uh, automated so that if you're interested in taking this further, you know what to do next. Um, we're expecting to take about 30 minutes um, to give you this overview of email automation. And then at the end, um, we've got some time to take questions. So please type in your questions as we go along, and I'll answer them either as you raise them or at the end. OK, so let's get going. Uh, firstly, why should you bother with email automation? What are the benefits, and what can it give you? Well, um, the most important thing to understand is that the internet has changed buyer behavior permanently. Um, to illustrate this, I'm going to start off with um, a business to consumer example, but I'm also going to show you why the same logic is equally applicable in business to business markets. So this is relevant whether you're in selling direct to consumers or whether you're selling to other businesses. In the past, Shoppers would carefully research their uh, planned purchases, um, read reviews in magazines, ask their friends, check out which retailers stock the product, make a decision about when and where to make the purchase, and then they would buy the item, take it home, then they'd have to take time to learn how to use it, um, research any sort of additional uh, purchases around it, and so on and so on. So um, people were going through a fairly standard and predictable process when making purchases. And meanwhile, sellers had no way of knowing which prospects were at which stage in the process. So the best that they could do was to send out blanket marketing messages that, that took the same message to everybody. The internet has changed all that. People no longer plan and research purchases in the same way. For a start, there are um, product reviews everywhere. And the internet makes it easy to access them. It also makes impulse purchases more likely. Um, who hasn't been online to buy one thing and ended up, ended up buying something completely different and, uh, and completely unplanned. Online shopping can also be very fickle. Shoppers can abandon one retailer for another at the click of a mouse if they think they can get a better deal elsewhere. They can also get halfway through a purchase, think better of it, and then return to it at a later date. What all this means for anybody who's selling online, and I'll show you why this is also applies to business to business in a moment, is that sellers now have to be ready and prepared to react in real time with the same spontaneity as their customers. They have to be able to communicate with customers in a way that reflects the exact point of the customer's buying journey, which may be quite specific to that particular customer. This means tracking multiple interactions and using the data that you've got about your customers. And the amount of available data is mushroomed. You can now get um, data not only about what your customer has bought, but also about what they haven't bought, which carts they abandoned, which pages on your website they visit, visited, uh, which form they got halfway through completing before they left it, where on a page they clicked, whether or not they opened your emails, whether they clicked on any links in your emails, 
uh, to get to go to your website, what they did when they got to your website, and so on and so on. Uh, and of course, the online retailer that's most famous for their innovative use of data is Amazon. They know what you've bought, when you bought it, what you thought of it, and from this data, they can build a profile of your buying tastes and compare this with other shoppers with similar tastes. This enables them to bundle goods that they think you may want to buy, <coughs> excuse me, and provide recommendations about other purchases that people like you have made. Many other retailers have followed suit to the extent that online shoppers are now expecting a high level of targeting and personalization from retailers. In B2B situations, the situation is hardly different. In B2B markets, sorry. Customers may not be making direct purchases for your services online, but they're certainly weighing up their buying decisions in a very similar fragmented way. It used to be that um, people would be only 30% of their way through their buying journey when they first make contact with your company. Nowadays, that's 70%. Uh, so that means that they've done a lot more research into uh, what, what you sell and how you sell it and comparing it with uh, other people who sell the same thing before you even hear from them. So people are weighing up their buying decisions in, in this very fragmented um, way. In, you know that if you're in a B2B market, then you'll know this. You, you don't need me to tell you that it's very rare for someone to come to your website for the first time, read up on your service, and then go, hey, that's for me, and buy whatever sell service you're selling without any further thought. Nevertheless, many business owners and even uh, marketing professionals and a very high proportion of web designers design websites as if people are going to make their purchase on the first visit. The whole website is designed around making the sale. This is a mistake because, on the whole, that's not how people buy today. A great advantage of the internet is that anybody can set up in business online uh, and, and uh, compete and, and have a website that looks as good as anybody else's. One of the, web, the internet's greatest dangers is that anybody can set up a business online and have a website that looks as good as anybody else's. In other words, a good looking website doesn't mean that the company behind it is a trustworthy business or even an established business at all. The suspicion and lack of trust that this creates means that potential clients may need to visit your website several times before they even sign up for your list. After that, you may need to contact them several times before they make any kind of purchase. Um, and you've probably seen some of the research on this. Um, it's somewhere between seven times and 25 times or something like that. But certainly, it's, it's multiple contacts before they'll make any kind of purchase or before they really before they'll even consider doing business with you. And even then, it could be some time before you've built up enough trust so that your customers will become regular clients and opt for your higher value services. So the primary purpose of your website is not to make the sale. It's to get a lead. In other words, to capture the person's email address. Its secondary purpose is to establish trust and confidence. The sale is actually made elsewhere, usually. So the website should be designed to encourage people to e leave their email address, give them a reason to do it. This is of paramount importance, because once you've got the person's email address, you can then email your new prospect in order to help them through the decision-making and buying process before they've even made any kind of contact with you. So whether you're in a B2B market or a B2C, the buying process is more complex today than it has ever been before. And you have to deal with that complexity or you're going to be outpaced by smarter competitors. There's been some research recently which shows, as I mentioned earlier, that in the past, uh, prospects would be 30% of the way through the decision-making process when they first got in touch with you. Today, it's more like 70%. So, whereas in the past, it made sense to invest in salespeople to take prospects through the decision-making process, now it's much more relevant to invest in marketing. You have to be influencing your prospects long before you even hear from them. Email is your most effective tool for achieving this. When it, comes to commu when it comes to communicating by email, a further problem is that the overall um, quality of email marketing is improving dramatically. More and more organizations are using more targeted emails, so consumers are getting used to higher quality emails, and their expectations are higher than ever before. So if your communications don't measure up, your customers will unsubscribe, or you'll be outmatched by better email marketers. Automation allows you to target your uh, communications more effectively, making use of whatever data you hold about your prospects. 
It also enables you to save time on tedious low value admin tasks, wrestling with spreadsheets, transferring data from one system to another. And you can then use that time profitably on more useful activities such as planning your email strategy, creating high quality content, analyzing responses, and split testing to optimize your campaigns. You can also provide your readers with highly targeted, hyper relevant content based on what you know about them. The result is that people respond more to your campaigns and you can use the, the data you there thereby obtain to feed the very best sales leads to your teams. This means that your sales effort is laser focused on your hottest pros prospects, leading to higher conversion rates, more sales, a lower cost per lead and greater profit. And automation is the only way to do it. You haven't got time to manually create highly personalized and targeted campaigns to send to small segments of your list. That would take forever. So you're really only left with two choices. You can continue to use basic, bland, untargeted, unfocused emails, which don't reflect your customers' experiences and increasingly lose ground to more advanced competitors. Or you can embrace automation and enjoy the benefits of more strategic, better targeted, intelligent campaigns. Until now, you've probably been forced to go with the former strategy. You don't really want to carry on with poorly targeted campaigns, but you probably feel you have no choice because the alternative, automation, seems just too time consuming, complicated, difficult, and expensive. Well, the purpose of today's webinar is to show you how, by following a process which I'm going to outline to you today, you can enjoy the benefits of automation in the same way that big businesses do. I'm going to show you how by doing that, you can steal a march on your slower competitors who are ignoring this fundamental change in buying behaviors and are carrying on with outdated methods of email marketing, regardless of how their customers' expectations have changed. Once you've set up your uh, automated campaigns, the pressure is off and you can relax, knowing that your customers and prospects will all receive a consistent, well-planned, optimized sequence of relevant communications, giving them the right message at the right time without a great deal of effort on your part. This greatly increases the probability that people will respond to your campaigns, so it increases your return on investment. The good news is that with today's advanced software platforms, email automation is within the, within the grasp of any business. Today, we'll be using the .mailer system to demonstrate because we're a .mailer reseller, so I'm declaring that interest right up front. Um, it's got some fairly advanced automation capabilities, but there are plenty of other software platforms around that will do similar things. So most of what we show you today should be possible on whatever software you're using. Uh, and we work, we also, although we resell this system, we work with um, clients, lots of other clients who work with different uh, software as well. Uh, if your software is not, uh, let us know. We can demonstrate our software to you and show you how you could use it to automate your campaigns. We sell this software for a lot less than if you went to DotMailer Direct. So if you're interested in the DotMailer system, contact us first. Some more good news is that in all likelihood, as I mentioned before, you, you're probably already using some form of automation, as we'll see in a minute. So you've already got a base from which to start on and on which you can build. The bad news is that it does take some effort to set it all up. I'm not going to pretend to you that you can automate your campaigns without putting in a bit of work. But the work is mostly up front. Once you've got your campaigns in place, they will go on bringing you business on autopilot long after you've forgotten about the effort involved in setting them up. And anyway, we're going to show you how to break the work down so that you can get up and running with automation with as little pain as possible and then build on what you've started over time. Okay, so now that we've established that automation is an absolute must for any serious email marketer, let's have a look at what it is. Put simply, automation is building campaigns that continue to operate or that change content without further input from you or your team. Okay, so any um, email campaign that changes its content or continues running without further effort from you uh, counts as email automation for our purposes today. Traditionally, this is how um, most people use email marketing. Someone signs up to your list and then they receive a regular email on and on, month after month, forever and ever, until they unsubscribe or expire. And it's usually a monthly newsletter, the dreaded monthly newsletter. Nobody really wants to read monthly newsletters. So even if people stay subscribed, typically they will not be very engaged by this approach. Automation allows you to depart from this outdated method. So let's examine what types of automation 
uh, there are and how and when you might want to use them. Firstly, the most basic form of automation, one that you're probably using already, personalization. This is where your software allows you to use a placeholder which populates each email with a piece of data from that contact's record. The most common example is using the person's first name. This works well if the reader knows you, but it can seem a bit over familiar if they don't. A more subtle example is using the business name or the town where the person lives. This is sufficiently eye-catching to improve upon uh, open rates and response rates without seeming intrusive. Next, we have autoresponders. So this is simply an email that is sent whenever a person sends you an email. You can do this when someone signs up to receive a free offer, subscribes to your mailing list, or just emails you. All of these situations represent a marketing opportunity. Another basic form of automation which you're almost certainly already using is scheduled campaigns. Usually you prepare your campaigns in advance and then schedule them to send at a later date and time. This allows you to send at an optimum time even if you're busy doing something else. Another basic form uh, of automation is remailing. This is where you set your campaigns to automatically resend to anybody who didn't open the campaign after a set interval. You can also change the subject line so that people don't think they're getting the same email twice. I would highly recommend that you remail every campaign. We consistently see amongst our clients an open rate on the second mailing of about half of the original open rate. Um, so simply sending the same content to the same people um, who didn't open it, even if you use the same subject line, will increase your results by 50%. So it's something that's definitely worth doing. Next, we have dynamic content. This is where your software places different content in the same campaign based on what data you hold about your customer or prospect. So in this example, we've got a beauty salon sending different content to men than it does to women. Dates, um, oh, here's, sorry, here's another example of dynamic content. This is um, a, a client who was sending an email uh, that some were, were going in English, some needed to go in Chinese, and some needed to go in Russian. Um, so he was able to send the same campaign, just one campaign, but it sent different languages to people depending on which country they were in. Next, we have date-triggered campaigns. And if you hold data that includes dates, you can use that date to trigger a campaign. The most obvious example of this is a birthday uh, campaign, but you might also use it to remind customers of an upcoming membership or subscription renewal or an appointment that they've booked, a reminder that some kind of checkup is due, such as an MOT or an eye test, or maybe a regular deadline. So for example, um, tax deadlines for accountants, year-end dates, that sort of thing. Um, another type of um, date triggered campaign is an events triggered campaign um, because an event occurs at a particular date and time. By updating the data that you hold in your database, you can automate campaigns to send when a particular event occurs. So this could be a customer purchasing something, for example, or someone attending a seminar, or even someone visiting, visiting your website if you integrate with a service that can link an email address to the IP address of someone who's visited. Next, we have behavior driven campaigns. Uh, this is the digital body language of the people who receive your emails. If you're addressing a group of people, you can see who's interested based on their nods and smiles and who's not interested based on their yawns, frowns, and rolling eyes as they look to the, towards the ceiling. The email equivalent of this is whether the person opens your emails and if they do, whether they click on the links in your emails. Although these measures are not foolproof, they're quite a good indicator of interest. So you can trigger emails based on how people have responded to earlier emails. You can also trigger them on other behave, behaviors such as website engagement, purchases they've made, sign up forms, abandoned baskets or forms, um, automatic following purchases and sign ups, and dynamic, dynamically con customized email content based on pages or products that people have browsed. Um, Dynamic segments, this is um, most email software will allow you to manage multiple address books so that you can send different emails to different groups of people. More advanced software allows you to define segments according to data that you hold about your subscribers and or their behavior. These segments are dynamic, so in other words, they update automatically if the data in the database changes. And they can be used as address books when you're scheduling campaigns for delivery. Uh, this, so this example that we've got on the, on the screen is uh, a segment of 
uh, people who've opened a campaign that they've received in the last 365 days. So that's basically anybody who's opened a campaign in the last year or anybody who hasn't ever been sent a campaign in the last year. And there's also an exclusion there that it excludes two specific address books for, for whatever reason. Uh, these kind of dynamic segments save a huge amount of time having to constantly update address books to ensure that you've taken account of the latest information about your contacts. So they can be a real time saver. Most people use a simple sign up form, um, which only asks for a person's email address and name. That's quite a good idea because the more fields there are on a form, the less likely people are to complete it. However, it doesn't tell you much about what sort of information your prospect or customer wants. So it's a good idea to encourage your readers, encourage your readers to let you know more about their preferences. You can do this using an online form called a preference center. The more data you've got about a person, the better you can target your emails, but the more you ask for, the less likely people will sign up. The solution is an extended welcome program and give them a reason to give you more data. In a similar way, sometimes people unsubscribe because they're re receiving too many emails uh, or because they're getting emails on subjects that don't interest them. You can s save people from unsubscribing by combining a preference center with an unsubscribe form. This allows people to specify what type of uh, emails and what frequency of emails, because you can do it by frequency as well, they want to receive either when they're signing up or when they're unsubscribing. You can even give people the option of an email holiday, specifying how long they would like to wait before you email them again. So that's another way of automating the way that people uh, interact with your email campaigns. Um, if, you, if you want to take automation to its, its absolute limits, um, APIs and web services are the way to go. Most high quality uh, email systems and other databases come with what's known as an API or a web service. This means that they provide a way to access the database, uh, either reading data from it or writing data to it via an online login. And what that means is that you can write applications or you, we can write them or you can get your uh, developers to write them that take data from one system, process it if necessary and put it into another system. So for example, when someone signs up for a free report on your website, you can add them to your email database immediately and send them an autoresponder. You could also add their details to your CRM database, tag them as a new lead, um, and put an action on whoever, somebody in your organization to follow it up. Uh, when you send your email campaigns, you can re record details of who opened what and whether they clicked on any links. And you could uh, use an API or a web service to feed that data into your CRM system. This means that when your sales team contact any given prospect or customer, they have in front of them a record of exactly what the prospect is interested in based on the emails that they've been sent, what they've opened and what links they've clicked on. And if you've got an e-commerce system, you can send information about sales in real time or near real time to your email system and automate campaigns based on who's bought what. If your software is any good, it will give you the ability to combine many aspects of the automation that we've discussed so far into automated programs. Um, and this allows you to build intelligent campaigns. So uh, for example here, th this is an example where maybe if somebody's made a purchase, you then send them a thank you email, all completely automated of course. And then during the second month when they're um, much more open to receiving emails from you because they've just made a purchase from you, you can send them new user type information that tells you how to use whatever, tells them how to use whatever product or service it is that they bought from you. Uh, later on, a few months later, they may be when they're more used to using the product or the service, you can send them emails of the advanced tips and tricks variety. And then later on, they may be interested in some kind of upgrade um, to, to repurchase, maybe to um, uh, uh, upsell them to a, a higher level of service. Uh, or if it's a product, there might be um, other peripheral products that, uh, that you can interest them in when they, once they've got used to using the product. All of this can be completely automated. Um, Here's another example. This is um, an example built by one of our clients. Um, they're called Shelton Development Services. Um, and uh, they produce software for local authorities and housing associations. This might look complicated at first glance, but let me talk you through it. Um, SDS's sales process involves encouraging people to attend free seminars. They recently held a seminar that was for local authorities only. 
So previously, uh, when they'd been doing this manually, uh, it meant that someone had to sift through their day space and find all the local authorities. Then they would send them an email, and someone had to remember to manually check who had registered and who had not in order to send the next reminder. This would go on through all the reminders until the week before the seminar, at which point someone would have to manually check who had registered and send them an email with joining instructions. You can see that this kind of approach is very labor intensive, and unless you're extremely disciplined and organized, it's prone to errors. It's very easy to forget to carry out one part of the process or to be so bogged down with other priorities that time scales slip. You might make mistakes in sorting out who or who has not, who has or who has not registered, meaning that people who shouldn't get follow-up emails get them, and those who should may not. This automated process eliminates all that effort and uncertainty. The program, which runs automatically, starts off by sifting uh, for everybody who's um, a local authority. It then sends them an email campaign. Then it waits until a specified date before it makes a decision. And the decision looks to see whether or not the person has confirmed their attendance at the seminar. If they haven't, it sends them a follow-up email as a reminder, waits until a specific date, and checks again, and so on and so on, through a series of emails um, until just before the seminar. At any point, if the person has registered, it then puts them into this waiting area, uh, which waits until the specific date before the seminar, before sending out the joining instructions. And at that point, the program ends. But it would be equally possible to have this program continuing on and sending out uh, emails thanking people for attending, sending out fee feedback forms, um, and even sending a series of uh, emails relevant to things that happened during the, during the seminar. So it's a few hours' work to set this up. With a bit of practice, it would probably take about two hours, plus the time it takes to write the emails. But the great thing about it is that once it's set up, you can just forget about it and relax, knowing that everybody is going to have a consistent experience and that all emails will go out bang on time with the right content to the right people. And I think I'm right in saying that this seminar was one of the most successful that SDSS have held. Um, and um, I think that must at least be in part due to the excellent organization that the team at SDS were able to implement by using this tool. Um, here's, another, here's an e-commerce example. This is a, a client of ours who's an online retailer selling acne cream. He wants to know who had bought which products so that he could cross-sell based on the products that people hadn't bought. We work with his web developer to create an app that automatically synchronizes the data in his e-commerce system with his email system. So every hour, um, it checks uh, to see what purchases have been made, and it records what people have bought. So these are the product uh, numbers across the top here. So it's uh, showing either yes, they have bought it, or no, they haven't bought it. Um, it also records a value in this RFM column here that indicates how recently they've bought, how often they buy, and how much they spend. And those are three very relevant, um, three, uh, relevant measures because um, for example, somebody who buys frequently and has bought recently but doesn't spend very much could be given a bundled offer to encourage them to spend a bit more. Someone who spends a lot but not very often could be ordered, offered some kind of automatic renewal or subscription system. Somebody who used to spend frequently but hasn't spent frequently, uh, recently is a lapsed customer who could be offered some kind of incentive to come back. So. This system allows the client to create campaigns that really target customers based on their buying behavior. It's really a question of using your imagination to work out what you can do. Uh, and by the way, if you're thinking that this system looks expensive, the cost of that app to the client was 600 pounds, very affordable. Here's another example of a client who's uh, taken things a bit further uh, and combined several, actually several uh, automation processes. The, the client is a web developer, and they've built a content management system for their client's website. And, and the, the ultimate client is an antique auction house. Uh, they built the client this preference center. So here in the bottom left, people can tick boxes to say what sort of antiques interest them. Then they use uh, dynamic, um, dynamic content to send the client a different email based on their preferences. So you can see this is the same email, but it's going out with different content based on what boxes people ticked when they first signed up. The net effect of this is that their customers receive emails that are really relevant. And as a result of that, they've, they've been packing out their auctions since they had this system. 
So um, there's just a few examples of what you can do with a bit of imagination. And yes, there is some work involved up front to think through what can be automated and build the programs. But once these programs are set up, they continue to work for you, bringing in more leads and more sales with less effort. Some upfront investment of time and money is required, but it will more than pay off with less work required for your future campaigns and more business being generated as a result, which is the main thing. So um, how to do it. If you want to go ahead, if you're interested in automating your emails, here's a step-by-step -step process that will show you how to get started. Firstly, clarify your nurturing and sales process. So really think about what's the sequence that, that your customers go through when they're deciding to make a purchase and when they're actually going through the, 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 purchase, uh, the process of um, buying from you. What are the steps they make? And then w once they've uh, made their first purchase, w what's the process they go through to make a subsequent purchase? And how can you influence them at each of these um, steps? Then think about the different types of automation that we've just covered and identify which parts of the um, nurturing process, which parts of the decision-making process, and which parts of the sales process you could automate. Uh, next, you'll need to plan the workflow. So this could be sketching out a flow diagram that kind of shows uh, a little bit like the, the one that we just saw inviting people to the seminar, what happens at different points in the process. Next, you want to create the content for the automated parts of your campaigns, and then build the campaign using the, using the appropriate software. Um, and then once you've actually got these campaigns running, don't forget to keep monitoring what's going on, testing different approaches, reviewing the kind of results that you're getting so that you can continuously improve. Um, if you're interested in going down this route, you can either, there's three options really. One is that you can do it yourself, uh, and it's possible to do that. You'll probably need to block out some time in your diary to understand how the software works, plan your workflows, write your email content, set up your campaign triggers, and test the whole system to make sure that it works OK and is doing what you're expecting it to do. Um, you might not have time to do that, but if you've got a marketing assistant in your, in your organization, or, or maybe um, if you've got somebody, a graduate on a project, for example, on some kind of scheme, this would make an excellent project for that kind of thing. If you're a bit unsure um, how to get started, then you may need a consultant uh, or some coaching. This is something that we can help you with because we uh, work on a consultancy basis, um, advising people on how to do this. And we can also uh, coach you through our mastermind or executive coaching programs. Um, the, the benefit of having some consultancy or coaching um, will be that you'll get up and running much more quickly and you can be more certain that you'll get things, you'll get the system right and working the first time. You'll also have expert guidance on how to monitor and improve your campaign so that the results you can you get will continue imp to improve over time. Uh, now, I, I promise you that there wouldn't be anything for sale on this webinar, so I, I don't want to tell you any more about that uh, at the moment. Uh, and there's probably other companies that can help you with this as well. But if you would like to know more, then please do get in touch. Um, your third option is if you haven't got the time or the inclination to get your hands dirty with automating your marketing programs yourself, you can outsource the whole operation to a service provider. Again, this is a service that we offer, uh, but of course there will be other firms that do that as well. Um, we can set the whole process up for you with minimal input from you, no more than a day of your time, split into three or four sessions, and we can then hand the program over to you and your team and train them how to manage it, or we can run it for you as a managed service. So um, that's it for today. Uh, I hope that uh, I've been able to give you an insight into the types of automation that are available um, and to um, whet your appetite to get started on automating your campaigns. In a moment, I'll answer some questions. So please use the chat box on the right to ask any questions that you may have. Um, and I would also really appreciate it if you could send me a short message to uh, let me know, you, you know, again, using the chat box, you can send me a short message to let me, let me know what you thought of today's webinar. Um, we'd like to use some of these comments on our website and our emails, if that's OK with you. So please uh, indicate if you're all right with that. Um, and um, yeah, if, if, you, if you were going to recommend, also, if you can say, if you're going to recommend it to someone else, what would you say to them about it? Um, in the meantime, don't forget that if you want more advice and guidance um, how to do this, it really is our specialist area, 
At Inbox Income, we do nothing but email marketing, so we really do know more about it than the average marketing company, for whom email is only one of several channels they use, uh, or web developers who tend to offer email marketing because they have to, because their clients want it, but secretly they hate it, and often they don't know a great deal about it. Um, we're developing some online learning materials, uh, including um, uh, some, some online videos and some workshops, um, online workshops to help people who want to automate more. Some of these will be free, so keep an eye out for those, and don't hesitate to get in touch if you would be happy, if, or if you'd like to chat through with, with what you want to achieve with your email automation. I'd be more than happy to give you some insight into what's possible in your case. Um, okay, so over to you for questions then. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll just take a sip of water. Okay, so use the chat box on the right-hand side if you've got any questions that you want to ask. Okay, so we've got a, a question coming in here from Nathan, and um, his question is, uh, can you track the uh, results of an email through the website? So I, I, think, what, well, I think what Nathan means there is, um, is there a way of knowing um, who has... Um, visited the, the website and the answer to that is yes that you can uh, m most software al will allow you to um, put uh, your email campaigns into your Google Ag Analytics as uh, a traffic source so you can um, you can then see in your Google Analytics exactly um, how many people went went to how much how many visitors came to your website as a result of the campaign, um, and you can also um, often view in the in the results area on your email marketing software um, to see the same thing. So you can see which which pages people visited, and even right down to um, individuals. So you can drill down to an individual and see which pages they went to on your website as a, as a result, and that can be um, quite useful um, information for. Um, for uh, for any kind of if you're doing any kind of follow up like tele sales or something like that, um, so I, ho I hope that's what you meant, Nathan. Uh, please do type a follow up question if um, if I haven't uh, completely answered the the question that you asked. Okay, so uh, this is a, a question from Dave. He's asking uh, what programming languages are used for uh, API uh, scripts. Um, well, the answer to that is that it varies. You, that's quite a technical question. So if you want to um, have a, a deeper chat with me offline, um, please uh, contact me later. I'll be showing you my contact details in a moment. Um, but you can use ASP, PHP, .NET, you know, um, all, all the kind of main um, programming languages. Um, but uh, the, the, the API generally tends to use XML. Um, so any program that supports XML or, or JSON is the other one. So um, all those languages are, are, are possible for, for uh, writing um, connectors. Okay. Um, well, um, we're, we're getting near to the end of our time now, so um, if there are further questions, um, then please uh, do get in touch. I'll just give you my contact details. You can either email me at uh, murray at inboxincome.co.uk. Uh, please do visit our website, www.inboxincome.co.uk. Uh, there are some interesting articles on there, uh, some free resources, and um, bookmark that as well, because we're going to be doing um, uh, launching a, a lot of new um, resources in the new year. Um, so do keep an eye on that. And um, you can also phone me on 023-8000-1105. Um, so do give us a call. I'd be very happy to spend some time with you uh, understanding your situation and just uh, letting you know what sort of automation could be um, possible in your case. In the meantime, thank you very much indeed for uh, attending this webinar. Thank you for your time today and uh, good luck with your campaigns. Thanks very much and goodbye.